Doing the radio transmitter teardowns is something like a tradition and the specialty of this channel. So today let's tear down the Yeti DS12 transmitter, which by some is considered as the best transmitters ever. And it's a completely different price range comparing to the different transmitter we've been opening over here. Because this is not a $200, this is five to $600 radio. Let's open this thing and let's see how it's built inside. Before that, on the outside, it's working. It's a proof that it's a still working radio with the super nice switches. I just love the detent of those switches and the gimbals that many people like. I, well, let's say would have to say it's rather a short throw gimbal with uh, pretty stiff springs. Uh, but Probably for flying with the airplanes is really pretty, pretty, pretty nice. By the way, what's interesting about this radio is that it can work with both 2.4 and 900 megahertz uh, receivers. You see, 2.4, 900 megahertz. I only have 2.4 gigahertz uh, receiver, so I don't know how it's working in the 900. But at least we can open this thing and see how it's built inside and what is the chipset used on this thing. I see that back plate is held by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws, which are what? Stars? I have star prepared, so let's see. Those two should be simple. Uh, I wonder why they use star. Probably to make this, this assembly slightly harder so that people do not really tamper with it. Um, somehow I feel that Standard hexes is the way to go nowadays because standard hexes are like a real standard. Okay, I see the problem with the kinetic driver. Uh, it's just too wide. But I think I will have a problem with those three because they are very deep holes. So um, maybe I will just fight with this um, without you watching me swearing and cursing about the, how deep the holes is, while I have only relatively short bit over here. Okay, all the screws are loose, so now the back plate should come out nicely. Uh, is there anything else that's holding the back plate? Hmm, interesting. Okay, okay, now we are talking. Now we are talking and this thing is out. So uh, let's begin with the plastic. Plastic looks looks okay. The external part of the mold is actually pretty nice. Uh, the internal part of the mold is not so nice, but this is the internal part, so rather no need to keep it super, super clean. And you see, there are a lot of marks on the on the side of the mold, but I suppose it's fine. The battery seems like to be user replaceable lithium with 2S lithium, uh, but it's interesting that there is no balancing lead over here. Let me maybe zoom in slightly so you can see better. There is no balancing lead, but this should be fine if it's charged with the very low current, because this is definitely 2S battery. Or maybe this is 1S in parallel. Hard to say. No, this is 1S in parallel, 1S to P, because the voltage is 3.6, and this has the double the capacity. So, okay, this is why they don't need the multi-cell multi, multi -cell charging unit, because this is one just big to cells connected in parallel that indeed you can replace with whatever you want and however you want because this is what just standard 18650. Uh, over here we see that there is some special hardware. I have no idea why this is Atmega. Okay, this thing has Atmega. Uh, MCU. I have no idea what the Atmega is doing over here, but I don't think this is very important right now. And what's interesting is that this thing over here on the top also has the pretty nice, pretty big STM32. This is the STM32 F439 in the huge package with all those connections. And we go into the radio section. What's interesting, we have this 
radio module over here which has the antenna that this is a call antenna i think this is 900 megahertz radio antenna because more or less this should be fine let me see if i can remove this protective protective foam from here and what we can say or oh, what we can see over here um I have absolutely no bloody idea what this thing is. What kind of the radio chipset they put over here. Because it does not look like the standard Semtech. It says... Okay, I checked the specification. This is the Murata LoRa module. It has the LoRa chipset plus STM32 L series MCU. Can be connected with the serial SPI and uh, I2C protocol to anything and holds everything required for the 900 MHz LoRa communication. Uh, let me see the... Okay, check the specification one more time. This is the Semtech XX1276 plus the MCU plus extra other things. So this thing is basically the same hardware as the Crossfire or N9. Only it comes in this small module that has everything in one place and the small integrated springy antenna. So you do not need an external antenna for the 900 megahertz LoRa receivers works out of the box. Here, however, we're gonna have the standard 2.4 gigahertz receivers that has the full antenna diversity. You see, uh, we have two separate connectors for the antennas and everything is shielded. Everything is shielded, that is a good sign. We like shielded electronics because this nicely prohibits all the RF noise of getting and mixing with our stuff. Um, here, no idea what's happening over here. We have, oh, this is interesting. Why the heck we have the SD card over here? Most probably this SD card holds the firmware. This is probably the chip replacement for the flash. And you just put all the resources on the internal SD card that you cannot really replace to download the logs or anything like that. Uh, it's an interesting approach to the problem. Should we... Okay, this is... Ah, okay, it's the SD card. Nothing interesting. Yeti model. Very nice PCB. This is really a super high quality PCB. You see how nicely gold plated everything is. How nice the lithography is. This is the high quality PCB. But most probably is slightly too big for the needs because look, uh, the copper basically ends over here and here we have only the laminate. So maybe they are making everything slightly stiffer uh, with just that. The switches are connected by the flat cables. I don't like the flat cables after the debacle with the jumper T16. But still we have the flat cables and those flat connectors. Okay, at least the cable management is there. And see, here we have the zip tie connecting everything together. Here we have the rotary. This is the rotary encoder because over here we have the encoder and two buttons. Uh, buttons are on the main PCB, but the encoder is over here, which holds in place pretty nicely. Here is something that looks like the power section for this and we have the gimbals. Uh, many Yeti users say that the gimbals are just the best thing since the sliced bread. Um, internally they does not, well, the plastic is nice. Plastic is, I would have to say, on those gimbals because they are full plastic with only the levers and the mechanical part over here, metal. At least the metal is super nicely, super nicely machined. I would have to say this is not a cheap stamped sheet metal part. This maybe even looks like machined. Uh, so that's this is the good sign, but the plastic over here is I think even the better quality is this plastic than the plastic that they ship with the case There are no markings on the plastic. So we would have to assume this is the ABS Maybe even the glass fiber reinforced ABS because it feels kind of nice. Let's see if it scratches No, no, this is not the glass fiber reinforced ABS, however, feels kind of nice. But this feels much nicer. Maybe this is carbon fiber. Yes, this is this not this is not carbon fiber, but this is 
this is glass fiber reinforced uh, plastic so this should give it uh, a nice stiffness and nice use quality and those are hall effect sensors you see over here we have the magnet that is moving when the stick is moving and here we have the uh, hall effect sensors that just measure the magnetic flux the strength of the magnetic field generated by the magnet and because it's changing with the position we have the very precise uh, Readouts. However, the problem with the <laughs> the Hall effect sensor is that if you add the magnet somewhere near to this thing, this will go bonkers. But but it at least it does not wear out because there is no contact uh, like on the standard potentiometer. This board is also very nicely made. A lot of copper put into the places. I think I will not be removing this this part because it looks like a lot of work and this is too long for this video. Uh, I like how the two boards uh, are connected because this board and this board are separate and they are connected with this long tenth of the inch, looks like tenth of the inch uh, connector, not some cheap uh, flat ribbon cables so uh, this will rather not break and the, the, the just the quality of the connector means that the connection between those two boards will never break and look how nice uh, even the cable management on the gimbals is super nice there is a piece of protection over here it's nicely snapped over there and what else what else can we say you see why this is the 500 600 bucks radio so like two to three times of the TX-16 from the Radio Master and even more expensive than the uh, quality Free Sky Radio. So we know exactly why. If this thing was only compatible with the FreeSky compatible receivers, that would be really awesome. Because the nice quality of the radio and the cheap receivers would be really a nice, nice, nice things to have. But it uses its own receivers, both 2.4 GHz and 900 MHz for the long range. And I think it still should be pretty fine. So let me assemble the radio because there is not that much we can take a look at below. I really don't want to remove all the screws over here and fight with the cable management. But on this side the electronics look super nice. This is nice thick board. Plastic maybe not perfect but the plastic on the gimbals is the glass fiber reinforced and well, if you don't know yet, um, someone is already the owner of this radio because I already gave it away on my Patreon and for YouTube supporters. So one of the reasons to become one of my Patreons, right? Right. Thank you very much for watching and happy flying.